All right, so I wanted to chat. Uh, the last video I made right now had to do with, you know, like spiritual forces inhabited inhabitations, uh, the, the human, and how a lot of the time you're dealing with that instead of the human. That's why God calls us to forgive, right? And let's not forget that God says in the Bible, he won't forgive you if you don't forgive them. That's a big uh, encourager to forgive, I would say. But um, with that said, let's put that aside because in this video, what I want to talk about has to do with appropriating your mind and your view and your heart so that it won't be troubled by the storms of this world. And so let's get right into it. So when you're, when you're dealing with, let's call them knuckleheads. When you're dealing with knuckleheads, people that don't want to listen, obey, uh, people that refuse, um, they want to go against the grain, they don't want to go with the process and you you have to shepherd them or you have to you know you're you're on assignment to kind of get them going um what the fruit that needs to bear there is grace you need to have grace with these types of people you need to have patience with these types of people you need to understand that they're in and this is a big big uh statement that i'm about to make if you get this this will help you out a lot you know how everybody has opinions, everybody has a worldview, right? And and a lot of worldviews are clashing a lot of the time to the to the to the way, okay, to the measurement of their um how do I put this? If you can't see clearly, if you're fogged up, then you're going to speak from a place of being fogged up. So if my my view is tainted or if it's obstructed with some kind of, uh, say, a tree, it's in a way I can't see clearly. So I'm going to be speaking from a place of not being able to see clearly. And so a lot of people out there are, are spewing out what they believe on every term and subject of life, whether it be abortion, whether it be politics, whether it be spiritual warfare, whether it be God, whether it be religion, whether it be whatever it is, family, death, whatever. Everybody's looking at things from their angle and they're looking at things from their perspective and they're looking at things from their maturity. They're looking at things, but how many of us have gotten to a higher stance than we were before and we changed our mind. We changed our worldview, we changed about how we perceive people or how we go about life and, and our attitude towards it. When I first had my kids, I was immature and I would do things like leave, okay, my wife almost killed me for this, but when, when I first had my kids, I felt like it was okay if I put the window down and I, I could go from here to there and grab something real quick and leave them in the car while with the window down. And I would be like, ah, she's going there and back. What's the big deal? My, my wife, you know, from my perspective at that time with the reasoning and the understanding of what I had going for me, I thought that it was a, but now I've grown and I see how much evil there is in this world and I see the things that could happen and I've grown wiser. My eyes see broader. It's almost like I see more things that I was blind to before. So my blind spots, now I can see better. I need to see a lot more than what I see now. Just like you, just like everybody. Because when you think that you've made it, you're just probably scratching the surface. But the fact here is this. Jesus was our greatest example of how to treat one another. And he had the high definition world view of everything. He said, guys, if you adopt this type of mentality, this type of behavior, this, you know, approach life from this angle, you're gonna see the best of the land. You're gonna eat the best of the land. You're gonna live in peace. And it's just gonna, it's not that you're not gonna go through hard times and hardship and suffering. It's not that people are not gonna betray you like Judas. It's not that, that people are not gonna deny you like Peter. But it's more so like you're gonna be on top instead of on the bottom. You're gonna be walking on water. You're gonna be walking on the storm instead of the storm overtaking you. And and that's that's kind of like, it comes with wisdom. It comes with understanding. But more than that, it comes with 
you know what 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 it is that you yield to are you yielding to your mountain your giant your problem like Saul's army yielded to to Goliath but David confronted the Goliath with with something greater that he found in, in himself which was faith faith in God and so what we need to understand is this there's higher dimensions and higher levels to life to approach the same setting the same reality the same opportunity but there's better ways to go about it you know yesterday I, I spoke with my one of my supervisors and I, I was asking him for uh, more responsibility I was asking him for um, you know management like like hey you, you can make me the overseer on this side and we can create this and that but guess what when I pitched that it didn't go as good as I wanted it to go I didn't pitch bad but I I know that I could have done better and just like you have had those moments of going into an interview or this or that and you leave with this like oh I could have done better here or there, right? That's how life is, man. Basically, we're in training and we're getting better and better and better and better. That's why the Bible says we move from glory to glory and faith to faith. You fail some tests, you stumble sometimes, but you learn something from it, don't you? Because in every area of your life, there's something to learn from. And if you don't learn, then you'll repeat the test until you, you learn. And, and, and that's how it is. But so this life doesn't throw at you anything new. There's nothing new under the, right? Under the sun, there's nothing new. Same old street lights, same old buildings that we walk into, same faces change, same old everything. But what changes is you, your approach on how you handle situations, handle people, handle problems. And why is it that when people that are older handle it more with patience and grace? Why is it that people that are older are slower to act because they think more and then they act instead of act and then they think, right? Why is that? Why? It's because we are all being developed and we're all in training and we're in this world to adopt the same example that jesus led us to 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 live out okay so basically the sinner that doesn't even know jesus christ the sinner he's learning lessons man god is he's on the potter's wheel you think he's not he is on the potter's wheel the sinner is on the potter's wheel the christian is on the potter's wheel the atheist is on the potter's wheel you know how i know that is because god is continuously going for the one that is lost the, the sheep that has gone astray. The one that God is an evangelist. It's not just me or you that is an evangelist. God is an evangelist. He ministers to them. He's their conscience. He's always looking out for them. You know how many times God saved my life before I gave my life to Jesus? Before I was baptized? Before I was born again? You know how many times He saved my life? He saved me from countless different uh, situations, man. God did. Okay, the holy God, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, right? We have we seem to think that God, right? Like for God so loved the world, right? But we think God only is in the lives of the Christians, right? This is what I want to say. God is an evangelist and he's after everyone. And so he's ministering to them. And so some sow the seed, but God gives the increase. God waters it. God gives the increase. So something like this could be a seed for somebody. But God sets them up with the next uh, layer of to get them where where they are saved and, and redeemed and, and living the right life. The Bible says that God wishes that none perish, but all come to repentance. That he's not slow as some count slowness, but he, he just waiting for people to repent. That's God's heart, man. And um, so God was working on me way before, way before I was a Christian going to church. He was working on me, man. And he would set me up with, with girls that were going to church. And my mind was not on church. 
But these girls were there because God was setting me up. So maybe you're being set up for the big moment, for the big reveal of God saving you and redeeming. And then you will have this like aha moment, right? Where literally it's like you're able to see things that you weren't able to see before. So in this video, we were talking about vision. Some people have it and some people are fogged up. I remember when I was fogged up, right? Sin fogs you up the most, okay? It doesn't allow you to see clearly. But you want to see clearly? Well, first ask. Ask God to help you see clearly. But the less, the, uh, the more you walk righteously, the more you understand life. Is this, is in this route. Life, the fruit of life, safety, security, blessings, um, going up instead of going down. You know, who wants to go to jail? Who wants to go to funerals? Who wants to get locked up? Who wants um, to have drama in their life? You know, people chasing them. Or who wants a phone call saying I'm pregnant from five different girls? Who wants that, man? Okay, go get an abortion. Okay, this, that, and the other. Who wants all that? Like, because those things count as curses. You know, after you, you know, that's another video. But then... God wants to forgive. He wants to wipe the slate clean. He wants to get you on the right track. That's the goal here. The devil wants to keep people thinking, hey man, I'm I'm getting away with stuff. Nobody found nobody saw me. Nobody found me. And they continue to 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 just chase after these illusions, mirages of fame and fortune. It's been like that since the beginning. Lucifer tried to uh bribe Jesus with the kingdoms of this world. Basically, with materialism okay and jesus is just like i'm pretty sure jesus was thinking in his mind i created this you're trying to sell me something i created get slapped so anyways it didn't work and, and the bible says things like what would it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul that's a scary verse isn't it but these are things that we got to ponder. We can't just leave it there, man. We got to see if it applies to us. If it applies to us, then we'll, what do we got to do? We got to we gotta start to try to turn the wheel and go into another direction than what we're heading into. We don't want to help the devil destroy us. Why do we want to help the devil destroy us? No, I want to go against, I want to rebel against the devil. That just as I was a really good rebel, rebel in this world. When I, you know, I would see a no smoking sign and I would go right under the no smoking sign and I'll spark up a cigarette because that, that was cool and, and I wanted attention. But, um, but w what's the greatest joy is to rebel against the devil, man. Rebel against temptation. Rebel against what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to steal, kill, and destroy, to, to do his bidding. Rebel against that, you know. Be against them on purpose. I'm not for you, man. You're my enemy. You know? Right perspective. Right vision. Come on.